Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Legally Engineer. Hello to all the students and viewers who are watching us this day. I am attorney Bendrick Maral Hit. Then again, together with me. I am attorney April M. Kuri. And this is our second collaboration for this uh, online video lectures. And uh, this is our module 2. Yes. yes. Module 2. General provisions on obligations. Yes, and for our introduction, this module 2 covers articles 1156 to 1162 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. And sabi nga natin ni Hui, this pertains to the general provisions governing obligations. And for our inter intended learning outcome, and about Yes, so for our intended that. learning outcomes, at the end of the module, the student should be able to discuss the essential requisites or elements of an obligation and to compare and contrast the five sources of obligations under the provisions of the Civil Code and lastly, to determine the form or manner by which an obligation should be incurred or manifested to be binding and enforceable to both contracting parties. Right, so attorney Uy, nandun na tayo sa general provisions, yes. particularly sa Title 1, and we will be starting on Article 1156, 1156. of the Civil Code. So, ano may sinasabi niyan sa Article 1156? So, Article 1156, an obligation is a juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. So, it defines the term obligation. Mm -hmm. So, attorney, ano ba ang, o saan ba, hinango yung word na obligations. Mm -hmm. So, yung term na obligation, very important for us to understand mm -hmm. that it came from the Latin word obligatio. Yes. Obligatio, obligatio, which means tying or binding. Ibig sabihin ng obligation ay binding to the parties to that obligation. Yes. And uh, the civil code actually has a definition. And ano ba yung sinasabi ng civil code? So, yung definition ng obligation as found on sa Article 1156 is defined in its passive aspect. Why is it defined in its passive aspect? Kasi it merely stresses the duty of the debtor or obliger when it speaks of an obligation as a juridical necessity. And it is silent as to the right mm -hmm. of the creditor obligee. Mm -hmm. So, ang sinasabi lang naman talaga doon sa Article 1156, yung duties ng obligor debtor, which yes. is to give, to, to do, do, or not to do. do. Kaya, passive aspect. Kasi ang debtor, matututunan natin later on, na siya ay passive subject. Yes. Uh, and, uh, doon sa definition ng 1156, may tinutukoy doon na juridical necessity. Yes. So, very important uh, to you students to understand, ano ba yung juridical necessity? Yes. This is not judicial necessity. Yes. Okay? This is juridical very necessity. Very different from judicial okay. necessity. So, obligation is actually a juridical necessity mm -hmm. because in case of non-compliance or kapag hindi ka nag-comply doon yes. sa obligation, the courts of justice may be called upon by the aggrieved party mm -hmm. to enforce its fulfillment or in default thereof the economic value that it represents. So, ibig sabihin, merong kumbaga, um, papasok dyan yung mga cor yung korte natin, yung courts of justice natin to compel yung uh, person who is obliged to deliver mm -mm. na mag-comply dun sa kanyang obligation yes. or kung baga sumaklolo or tulungan yung ating aggrieved yes. party. Kasi nga, in other words, uh, the debtor or yung obliger. obliger must comply with his obligation whether he likes it or not. Mm -hmm. Kasi kung hindi siya mag-comply, there will be sanctions or punishments. Mm -hmm. Siya Pwede siyang maging liable for damages. For damages. Mm -hmm. yes. And yung damages na yan, it represents yung sum of money given as a compensation for the injury or harm suffered by the creditor, creditor. for the violation of his, his rights. rights. So in other words, the again, yung the debtor must yes. comply with his obligation whether he likes it or not. Kasi kapag hindi na comply, may sanctions or punishments or may harmful consequences. Mm -hmm. Kasi nga naman, um, if obligations were not made enforceable, then the people can disregard them with impunity. Ayun yeah, yes. naman natin yun. So, gusto natin, kung ikaw ay may obligasyon, uh, you comply. You comply. And non-compliance would mean... Um, you will be liable for damages. Liability for damages. Yes. 
Now, um, what's the nature of obligation under the civil code, Attorney uh, William? So, the nature of obligations under the civil code, we have um, civil obligations and natural obligations. Okay. So, what are civil obligations? So, obligations which give to the creditor or obligee a right under the law to enforce their performance in courts of justice. Mm -hmm. Uh, yun yung civil obligations. Example of civil obligations. Uh, example of uh, civil obligations are... Uh, uh, loan. Loan, uh, yes. Contract of loan. You're obliged to pay. Mm. Okay. So, How about natural obligations? Yes. Natural obligation naman, uh, these are obligations that are not based on a positive law. and uh, it, But it's based on equity or the natural law and do not grant a right of action to enforce their performance, although in case of voluntary fulfillment by the debtor, the latter may not recover what he has uh, delivered or rendered by reason thereof. So in short, yes. ang kaibahan nito dun sa uh -huh. civil obligation, ang civil obligation kasi is based on a positive law yes, and it can be enforced. In courts. In courts. Uh -huh. Pag natural obligations, uh, generally, hindi nga siya based on positive law and therefore, it, uh, you cannot uh, enforce. enforce. You cannot enforce it in courts, and you cannot demand mm -hmm. compliance mm -hmm. from the other party. Although the debtor may voluntarily okay. perform the obligation. So, if voluntarily perform it, of course, valid and binding it sa kanya as a uh, debtor. Debtor. In the end, hindi naman kasi siya uh, uh, finors yes, to comply to with comply. that obligation. But what's the example of natural obligation? Uh, Natural obligations, pwede dyan yung um, quasi-contracts, quasi -contracts, contracts, yes. like solution indemnity mm -hmm. and negosurium gesture. Uh, so, Mapapag-usapan natin yan pagdating dun sa iba't ibang uri na ng uh, sources, uh, sources of obligations. Of obligations. Yes. Yes. So guys, it's important for us to understand ng obligation, it has its essential requisites. Yes. So no? bakit mahalaga yung essential requisites? Bakit kailangan natin aralin yun, yung essential requisites of an obligation? But it's important para makita natin kung yung legitimacy of the obligation itself. Kasi yes. in the absence of these essential requisites, ano ba kung ganyan sa obligation na The obligation will not be binding or effective between the parties. So kailangan may concurrence of all the four elements. In the absence of even one mm -hmm. of the elements, it will, uh, it will not be binding. Oh. Yes, so there are four essential requisites. Mm -hmm. First is a passive sub uh, subject, then an active subject, yes. then object or prestation, or the, and the juridical or legal yeah. tie. That's uh, P-A-O-J. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, passive subject. Ano nga ba yung passive subject? So, uh, passive subject natin kanina, as, as mentioned earlier, yan yung debtor obligor. Which means? Which means the person who is bound to the fulfillment of the obligation. Yes. In short, he who has the duty to perform. Yes. So, kung yung passive subject, siya yung debtor or obliger, syempre, yung opposite naman nun, yung active subject natin, natin that's yung the creditor obligee. Siya naman yung person who is entitled to demand the fulfillment of the obligation. Ito naman, siya yung may right. Mm -hmm. Yung uh, passive subject, siya yung may duty. Yes. Yung active subject, siya yung may right mm -hmm. to the fulfillment. And of course, uh, na, et, ibig sabihin, yung passive at yung active, mm -hmm. sila na yung uh, parties no? dun yes. sa ating obligations. Yes. And ang um, pinag-uusapan natin dito, or yung subject matter of the obligation, yun yung tinatawag natin ng object, object or, or prestation. prestation. And uh, the conduct required to be observed by the debtor. Ito yung conduct na dapat gawin or i-observe nung debtor na meron tayo. It may yes. consist in uh, giving, giving, doing, or not doing. And definitely, without a prestation, there is nothing to, to perform. perform. So, kailangan talaga mag-exist yung object or prestation. Yes. And then lastly, lastly, we have the juridical or legal tie. Ito yung efficient cause or source of the obligation or what we call the vinculum juris. Mm -hmm. uh, or that yung, which binds or bind. connects the parties to the obligation. Mm -hmm. So, siguro, para mas uh, mapalino natin, na, let's give an example. Yes. This is the perfect okay. time for us to give an example. So, for example, under a building contract, Vice bound himself. Vice ganda ba yan? No, si Vice ganda. Si Vice ganda. Vice ganda bound himself to construct the house of Pastor 
Pastor, sino pastor kilala mo? Oh, marami kasi dito sa Batangas. Uh, pastor, uh, 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 pastor for 1 million pesos. So, si Vice, siya yung passive, passive subject. subject. Kasi siya yung debtor, siya yung mm-hmm. obligor, siya yung person who is bound to the fulfillment of, ob- of the obligation at siya din yung may duty to fulfill. And uh, that duty is to, to construct. construct the house. The house. No? So, si, kung si Vice yung ating passive subject, si Pastor naman dito yung active subject. Yes. Kasi siya yung may right to demand the yes, fulfillment the or the performance of the obligation which is to con- construct his house yes. uh, which is due to that of uh, vice. Mm-hmm. And yung construction of the house, yun yung object or prestation. Yun yung doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yun yung to do. Diba sabi na to do or not to do or to give. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yung construction of the house, yes, yan yung object or prestation. Specifically yung to do. Obligation yes. to do. And uh, in this case naman, yung juridical uh, or legal tie, yun yung building contract. Kasi yes. usually, pag ganyan, merong uh, uh, contract, contract between the contractor, constructor, or yung building owner. Yes. No? And yun yung uh, juridical tie or yung legal tie na magbabind sa kanilang dalawa. Yes, yun yung now, source ng obligation. Yes, nila. that's the source of the yes. obligation. Suppose, uh, attorney Oye Vice, um, had already constructed the house. Natapos na niya. Uh-oh. And it was the agreement that pastor would pay vice after the construction is finished. Um, ano ngayon yung mangyayari naman? So, magkakabaliktad ngayon yung kanilang posisyon. Mm-hmm. Si vice ngayon ang magiging active subject kasi siya na ang may right. May right which is to collect mm-hmm. the payment demand or to demand payment. payment. At si pastor naman, siya kung siya dati yung active. active subject, ngayon siya naman ang magiging passive okay. subject kasi siya naman ang may duty to pay. Mm. Oh, duty to pay the building, mm. the construction of the building. Mm. So, in that case, ang object mm-hmm. or prestation naman na gagawin ni uh, pastor is the payment. The payment. The payment of yes. the... A money the, giving. Money. the giving, the giving na, of the money. Of the money. And uh, oh. yung tie nila, juridical ties. Juridical ties, the contract. The, the contract. building contract. contract. Yan ay kapag na-perform na ni pastor, device. or device. device, yung construction mm-hmm. of the house. Magpapalit sila ngayon ng quest position. Oh. Alright, so um, uh, we hope malinaw sa inyo yun kasi yes. very important na maintindihan ninyo yung passive, active, object, at saka yung juridical tie kasi as we go along, yes, we'll be dealing with a lot of examples, yes. no? And uh, kapag hindi malinaw yung basic na yun, yung foundation, medyo mahihirap. Ah, so, uh, maybe you wanna stop now and then e-process mo talaga ah, kung uh, ano yung napag-discussion uh, uh, natin. Okay? okay? So, now, um, as to form of obligations, yes. uh, attorney Uy, ano ba yung uh, form of an obligation? The form of an obligation, it refers to the manner by which an obligation is manifested or incurred. Mm-hmm. It may be oral, it may be in writing, or partly oral, par- partly oral and partly in writing. So are you saying, uh, attorney Uy, na ano, pwede palang hindi nakasulat? Kasi so, ang, ang thinking, usually, di ba? Ang thinking no, ng mga okay bata, o ng mga tao, kailangan laging may kontrata, may, nakasulat. May written, written contract. contract. Oh, oh. Pero dito, um, So sabi, as a general rule, the law does not require an obligation to be in any form for its validity or binding force. General rule, hindi required na written. Pwedeng oral, pwedeng partly in writing, or partly in oral. Yun yung general rule. Although, may exceptions dyan. Yes, Doon sa mga contracts, na kailangan talaga na may written document. Pag-usapan natin yung pagdating sa contracts. Yes. Diba? Yung yung contracts. yes. Contracts. So, ngayon naman, um, um, we have to distinguish ano ba yung obligation, yung right, at saka yung wrong. Yes. Kasi dito, pag-usapan natin ano ba yung mga obligasyon, ano ba yung karapatan, at ano, ano ba yung, yung pwedeng mali, mali or wrong o, o, na makomit. Legal wrong. Legal wrong. Yes. So, ang obligation, again, this is the act or performance which the law will enforce. Yes. I-enforce ito ng batas. Doon sa uh, tao who is obliged or yung may obligation. To give, to do, to or give, not. To do or not. To do. Lagi tayong babalik doon, no? To give, to do, or, or not, not to, to do. do. Now, what is this right? So, right is the power by which a person has under the law to demand from another any prestation. So, so we have to start with the right. Oh, Kasi kung wala kang karapatan, wala kang right, 
Yes. They have no, or the other party has no obligation. In short, alamin mo kung saan ka lulugar. Yes. Uh, <laughs> dapat, lumugar. Uh, lumugar. Lumugar. Dapat, dapat may karapatan ka. Baka may pinaglalaban ka, wala ka naman palang karapatan in the first oh, place. Oh, so, but there are instances wherein there can be a legal wrong. Yes. No? At ano tong legal wrong na pinagkakas? Yung legal wrong or yung cause of action, it is an act or omission of one party in violation of the legal right or rights of another. So, act, ginawa, yes. omission, hindi, hindi ginawa. ginawa. Oh, so, naka, may wrong ka pala kapag kahit hindi ka gumawa, pwede ka palang mag-commit ng wrong. Kasi kapag oh. obligado ka under ng law, nagawin mo yung isang bagay at hindi, hindi mo ginawa, ginawa, that's considered a legal wrong. Yes, Pero omission, may, you yes. committed to yes. do. Meron kasing you know. requisites or elements din itong legal yes. wrong. Dapat mag-exist to para magkaroon ka nga ng cause of, cause of action. action. Yung cause of action, guys, yun yung kailangan na meron ka bago maidulog yung, uh, yung, yung, kaso, yung kaso sa, sa korte. korte. Pag wala kang cause of action, di, well, hindi. wala kang karapatan na mag-file yes. ng action. Hindi ka papansin ng korte. Yes. So it's just, it's, ano, a scrap. it's just a scrap of paper. Scrap of paper pag wala kang cause of action. So pag-usapan natin, ano-ano ba yung elements of a legal wrong or injury? Really? Yes, yeah, so first element, there must be a legal right in favor of a person who is the plaintiff or the creditor. Mm-hmm. So, dapat may existence mo na may karapatan in favor of, a, of the creditor or the plaintiff. Mm-hmm. Second element, there is a correlative legal obligation on the part of the debtor or defendant uh, not to violate the said right, to respect. Mm-hmm or not to violate the said right. For example, siya si creditor, si attorney, si attorney Bendrick, siya yung creditor, meron siyang legal right in his favor. And ako yung debtor, there is a correlative legal obligation on my part to respect his right or not to violate his right. So pwede yung act, yun yung respect, at saka yung not to violate, yung uh, not to violate his Right. Uh-huh. So, basically, ang sinasabi nga ni attorney dito is that dapat may, may right ka and then may correlative obligation on the other party. Yes. Tapos, yung pangatlo dyan na element or requisite is that there is an act or omission na ginawa mm-hmm. in violation of the said right which resulted into an injury or, or damage. damage. So, kailangan mag-exist din yun. Kasi, kung wala namang injury, injury or damage, wala namang legal wala cost of, wala cost wala of cost action. Of action. So, so, hindi sapat na merong right at mm-hmm. hindi din sapat na merong obligation. Right. Kailangan right. may injury or damage to the creditor plaintiff. And normally, yun yung ipuprove mo. Yes. Yung injury or damage, mm-hmm. eventually. Kasi, doon mag-base din yung, yung court sa paggagan na So, madali yung, naman tandaan yung elements kasi mm-hmm. interconnected. Una, kailangan may oblig- meron right. siyang right yung creditor tapos may obligation ang debtor na to violate or to respect that, that right. Said right. Tapos, after nun, meron act or omission on the part of the debtor mm-hmm. violating the said, said right. right of the creditor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. So, I hope that's clear to us. Yes. Uh, mapapaliwanag pa natin yan as we go along sa mga examples. Na yes, you also take note of the elements of the wrong. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, at our neither kinds of obligation according to the subject matter. Yes, you know? there and are two uh, kinds yes. of obligations according to the subject matter. We have real obligation and personal obligation. Mm-hmm. Itong real obligation, yes. ito yung obligation to give uh, at yung give. personal obligation, the obligation to do, to do or, or not, not to do. do. Mahalaga lang yes. yung to give, to do, or not to do. Mm-hmm. So under real obligation, for example, um, Et, et, ito kasi yung in which obligation to deliver yes yes um ito yung ang subject matter is a thing which the obligate obliger must deliver, deliver to, to the, the obligee example for example i bind myself to deliver a box of face mask to you or mm. a face shield to you so real so, obligation siya kasi the obligation is to deliver to deliver which is to, to give, give. Oh. No? Now, dun sa pangalawa, yung personal obligation, which is an obligation to do or, or not, not to do, do um, that in which the subject matter is an act to be done yes. or not to be done. And it so has uh, to two kinds. Oh, oh, to oh, do or not to do. To do or not to do. Yung positive personal mm-hmm. obligation at yung negative personal obligation. Positive personal obligation, ito yung obligation to do mm-hmm. or to render some service. So, if, for example, as a student, your positive personal obligation is 
to study. study. So, so there's to a study is to do. Oh, oh. Yes, mag mag aaral talaga kayo. And that's your, your positive personal oh, obligation. Sa amin naman, as faculty members, our positive personal obligation is to, to teach. teach. Uh, to teach. Yung negative personal obligation man ito yung obligation not to do. So pwede rin pa lang obligation yung not to no, do. No, yung not to do. Okay? Example? Example, yung as a student, your negative personal obligation is not to violate school policies. Hmm. Kasi in the event na you violate the school policies, then you will be liable. Liable. You're liable. Ganyan din naman kami as faculty members to, to follow or to obey school policies. Naalala ko lang, yung, yung sa mga students ko din, uh, last year, ang sabi nila, nagpabigay ako ng example ng positive personal obligation. Sabi niya, as a student, may positive personal obligation is to study, and my negative personal obligation is not to study. That is incorrect. <laughs> Wag ganun. <laughs> Oo, Don't me. <laughs> Wag niyong dagdagan lang ng not. Kaya not to do, dagdagan ng not to study. No, mali. Kailangan, may sense din naman yung inyong... Walang sense yung, as a student, my negative personal obligation is not to study. No, that is wrong. Your negative personal obligation is not to violate. Oh. Ibig sabihin, wag mong gawin yung pag-violate. Yes. Oh. Oh. Prohibit. It's a prohibition. Actually. Yes, it's a prohibition. Halimbawa, yung sa liquor bond, mm-hmm. pwede yan. Not to no, do. Oh. Not to do. Not to drink liquor. Oh. This time of pandemic. Yes. So, kapag minum- this time of pandemic, your personal obligation, your positive personal obligation is to wear face mask, mm-hmm. to wear face shield, mm-hmm. observe physical distancing. Yes. Uh, not to go to out do, of your oh, house oh, kung ikaw ay less than 21 years old. At saka kung pregnant or senior Elderly, citizen. Vulnerable. Oh. Yes. Stay at home, team bahay. Yes. Negative personal obligation mo naman nga, stay in naman. Yeah. Um, not to go not, out. Not to go out. Oh. Yes. Alright? So, that's 11.56. Tandaan na, kahit tulog, dapat alam na natin ang 11.56. Then, 11.56, an obligation is <laughs> it's a juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. Okay? That's the first article uh, for our obligations and contracts. And that is to be followed by a very important provision, and that's 11.57. Yes, Article 11.57, obligations arise from law, contracts, quasi-contracts, acts or omissions punished by law, and quasi-delics. No, ulitin ko, ah. Okay. Uh, the obligations arise from law, contracts, quasi-contracts, acts or omissions punished by law, and quasi-delics. Importante to, kasi ito nga yung sources, sources of, of obligation. obligation. So, iisa-isahin natin yan. Okay. So, let's start with law. law. So, when the obligation is imposed by the law itself, mm-hmm. yan yung legal obligations yes. imposed by law. Example? Mm-hmm. Obligations to pay taxes and obligation to support one's family. Okay, so in, okay. again, imposed ito ng law and ang source ng obligation mo nga dito is yung batas. Kagaya ng obligation to pay taxes na sa train law mm-hmm. yan, or dati yeah. na sa NIRC. NIRC sa tax code of 1997 yes. yung obligation to pay taxes so yung law, edi yung train law at NRC, those are imposed by law tsaka yung obligation to support one's family, nasa family code family naman code. niya okay. so hindi pwede na uh, magbibuild ka ng family <laughs> no? magpapakasal ka for Uh-oh. example and then pag nagkaroon ka ng asawa ng anak uh, i-abandon mo, hindi mo panagagutan hindi ka magsusuport uh, hindi ka panagsuport financially for example, mm-hmm. pwede pumatak yan dun sa bausi criminal case Uh-oh. yun, criminal case yun. So, take note of that so that's the first law and then another source of an obligation is contract ito yung yes. medyo familiar talaga yes, yung contracts. Na, contracts when the obligation arises from the stipulation of the parties. Yung Ibig sabihin, agreement, agreement ng parties. usapan ng uh, 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 partido. Yes. Example nito, the obligation to pay indebtedness by virtue of a contract or an agreement. Yes. Indebtedness, that means yung pagkakautang. No, kung halimbawa may ut- na- contract nangutang of ako, loan. yes, contract uh-huh. of loan, nangutang ako kay attorney Oy, uh, we have an undertaking, a contract of loan, and then therefore, I have an obligation to okay. pay her yung kung magkano yung inutang ko with interest pa kung nakastipulate kung si, yes, dun sa kontrata na napag-usapan namin. Yes. And th- that's the law, no? Mm-hmm. Dun sa parties, yung contract na napag-usapan nila. Yes. Okay? 
What's so, the next one, attorney? So, yung third source of obligation natin ay quasi-contracts. Mm-hmm. Parang when, bago sa pandemic ito, yes, quasi. When the obligation arises from lawful, voluntary, and unilateral acts which are enforceable to the end that no one shall be unjustly enriched or benefited at the expense of another. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, merong anti-unjust enrichment. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung quasi-contracts, no? Kapag daw yung obligation mo nga ay nag-arise from a lawful, lawful or voluntary, and unilateral acts. Yun. So, uh, uh, actually covered to ng Article 2142 of the Civil Code. So, yes. example nito, halimbawa, um, attorney Uy, habang naglalakad ka, Uh-oh. may nakita kang wallet, no? at yung wallet ay limpak-limpak ang Pakan- perang nasa loob. O kahit wala man laman. O kahit wala. O, o, kahit sige, man laman. na may nakita kang wallet. Oo, na hindi um, sa'yo. Pwede ba akong sabihin ko na thieves? <laughs> ano? Akin Pwede na naman, pero Pwede. But, pero it is uh, not lawful. Not lawful. Oh, not lawful. Kasi sabi, kailangan i-turn over mo yan. You have to return the money paid. Oh. Or we have to return the wallet. The wallet. Oh, oh. Oh, alimbawa naman, dun sa ut- utang ko kay attorney, oh, may utang oh. ako sa kanya, let's just say, sampung libong piso. Yes. And then, uh, by mistake, uh, nabayaran ko siya ng 20,000 kasi... Oh. Ang dami kong utang. So, <laughs> akala ko sa kanya ko nautang yung 20,000. 20, so, nag, nag-issue ako sa kanya ng cheque eh, worth uh, 20,000 20, pesos. So, ito naman yes. si attorney. Uy, nakita niya pa 20,000. Pwede bang si attorney, uy, hindi niya isole sa akin yung excess na 10,000? Under sa quasi-contract, mm-hmm. as a source of obligation, you are bound to return what is paid by mistake. O, yan yung uh, solution in verity. So, kasi nga, oh. iniiwasan so, avoid natin unjust yung unjust enrichment. Kasi unfair naman oh. na ikinayaman mo ng 10,000 yung pagkakamali na pagbabayad ng kapila. Oh. Oh, halimbawa na lang, para mas madali, nagbayad ka ng pamasahe sa gym. Mm. O, oh, ilabis yung sinukli sa'yo nung man, ni Mano. Kumita ka pa. Kumita ka pa. <laughs> Alam ba, o, benten binayad mo. Dapat ang, pumasa, ang sukli lang sa'yo is 10 pesos. Ang sinukli pa rin, ang sinukli pa sa'yo, 50 pesos. Grabe naman. O, grabe naman. Baka tumubo sa inyo yan. Diba, balik nyo. Okay nga, no? Tutubuhan din kayo ng sungay niya. Uh-huh. <laughs> o, kaya naman, sa kantin, bumili ka ng kikyam. O, tapos, ang sinukli sa'yo, labis babalik mo yung Maawa kayo at makababa. Even though, wala namang nagsasabi, wala namang talagang batas na nagsasabi na ibalik mo, under quasi-contracts, you have to return what you have received by mistake. Kasi we ha- uh, it is a provision against unjust enrichment. So siguro, for example, kung nalaman ko, attorney Uy, na labis ng 10,000 yung aking naibayad sa'yo, Meron mm-hmm. akong Meron kang right. Oh, right. Oh, oh, you may have right. the right to recover yung uh, excess na 10,000 pesos Kasi based on quasi-contracts. May source siya ng obligation. Yes, na yung quasi-contracts. Yes. Alright, so that makes sense. Now, yung pang natin, acts or omissions punishable by law. Ito yung tinatawag natin na crimes or delicts. Mm-hmm. delicts no? or when crimes. the obligation arises from civil liability as a consequence of a criminal offense. Yes. Covered ito ng Article 11. Uh, 61 ng civil code. So, yes. siguro, bigyan natin ng example para mas ma-explain natin ito, no? Yes. Halimbawa, okay. yung obligasyon ng isang, let's just say, uh, thief. Yes. Thief. Diba, yung isang magnanakaw, diba? Mm-hmm. So, um, pag nagnakaw siya, ano ba yung obligasyon ng magnanakaw oh, oh. na to? Oh, for example, car napper. Oh, para yeah. mas mabigay, mm-hmm. para mas maganda. Mm-hmm. So, Halimbawa, na, na may carnapping incident na nangyari. So, ano ang obligasyon? At nahuli yung carnapper. Ano ang obligasyon ng carnapper? O, o kung ano ang right noong victim? O, nung may ari ng sasakyan. So, um, in, in that case, mm-hmm. the carnapper has the obligation to return the thing itself or yung kotse or yung yes. sasakyan na dinako niya. On top pa yun, dun sa kanyang criminal, criminal liability. So, and we are talking yes. of civil liability mm-hmm. arising from, from criminal offense. Oo, kasi nga, every criminal... Uh, every person who is, is criminally criminal liable, liable is civilly likewise civilly liable. liable. So, kagaya din ng rape, for example, mm-hmm. that is a criminal case. Mm-hmm. Yung uh, crime of rape. 
So, yung crime ng rape, yun yung criminal aspect. Yung, yes. Ang criminal aspect kasi, yung punishment, yung imprisonment. Yeah. No? Yan yung criminal aspect. Yung civil aspect, yung civil liability for damages. damages. Oh, magkano, for example, no, ngayon, mga, mga, oh, mga 75,000, 100,000, depende, depende sa, depende sa gravity ng offense. So, tatandaan niyo lagi yun. Uh, pero ang pinag-uusapan natin under the law and obligations and contracts ay dun sa civil, civil liability. liability. That's what happened that yung civil liability arises from a criminal. Oh, so, liability. halimbawa, kagaya nga nung magkukolekta ako sa'yo ng damages, for example, rape. Hmm. Ang tatanungin sa'yo, what is the source of your obligation? Hmm. Saan nanggaling yung karapatan mo na siniling ako ng damages dun sa rape? Oh, edi, doon, it arises out of the criminal offense of rape. The act which is punishable yes. by law. Okay? So, I hope uh, malino yan sa atin. Correct. And uh, yung panglima na source of an obligation is the quasi-delics quasi or, or torts. It's when the obligation naman arises from damage caused to another through an act or omission, there being fault or negligence, but no contractual relation exists between the parties. Ito na may cover ng Article 2176. Yes. Ano pinagkaiba nito, attorney, from the acts or omissions punishable by law at yung, eto nga, yun sa ngayon na quasi-delics or torts. Yung acts or omissions punishable by law, ito kasi dito sa quasi-delics, laging may fault or mm. negligence. Doon sa acts or omissions punishable by law or crimes, pwede rin naman siya na may fault or negligence. Pero hindi laging through fault or negligence. Pero dito sa quasi-delics or torts, laging may fault or mm. negligence and there shall be no contractual relation really? existing between the parties. Kasi kung may uh, pre-existing contractual relations, hindi, hindi contract. na, hindi is, na ito ang oh, source. Hindi, hindi quasi-delic ang magiging source ng obligation, kundi yung contract. contract. Kasi that's oh, the law between that the parties. The law between the parties. Okay. So, um, ang example nito, for example, the obligation of the possessor of an animal to pay for the damage we, which it may have caused. For example, si uh, attorney, uy, may ari ng kambing. Uh, kambing. <laughs> Yung kambing, ano nangyari sa kambing? Halimbawa, naka, wala Kinain ako makakambing. Kinain yung tanim ni Mr. Eh ako, Marami. Eh ako, plantido ako. Uh-oh. So marami akong mga tanim-tanim. Yes. Itong kambing ni Miss Koy, nakapunta sa bakura namin at pinagkakain ang aking mga tanim. Yes. In short, Uh-oh. nagkaroon ng damages. May damage. So Uh-oh. ang tanong, ako ba ay merong right or cause of action to ask for damages from Attorney Uy? Attorney Uy, ano ba ang... Ang under article... 2183 of the Civil mm-hmm. Code, meron. Mm-hmm. O, at saka, ang tatanong siya, source of obligation oh, mo, ay di quasi-delic or torts. Oo. There is uh, negligence. There is no. negligence kasi napabayaan ko yung, ba, dapat kasi nakatali yan or nakakulong. Bakit so, pinababayaan mo yung kambing? O, tapos may no pre-existing contractual relation between the two of us. Wala naman. Wala naman kaming contract na nangyari yun. Yan. And there is damage to another. Yeah. Na damage yung kanyang property. Yung mga halaman Kanin. ko. So, oh. kaya may karapatan ako na kumolekta. Yes. Kapag uh, tinanong, what is the source of obligation ni attorney Mara- of me to mm-hmm. attorney Maralit? Eh di quasi-delic or course. Okay. okay? So, actually guys, lima yung nabanggit natin na sources of obligations. But uh, if you're, if you will think about it, there are only two sources and that practically is law speaking. and contracts. Yes, yes, practically speaking. Dalawa lang yan. Yung mm-hmm. law, yung batas, at saka yung contracts. Yes. Because obligations arising from quasi-contracts, delics and quasi-delics are actually are imposed, imposed by, by law. law. And that has been the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Young Ben versus, versus O'Brien. So, um, it's good, no? Kasi, uh, banda dyan, mag-a-assign tayo sa mga estudyante ng cases. cases. Yes. So, um, excited tayo na pag-usapan yung mga actual controversy and cases uh, na uh, decided, decided by, by the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Okay? So, that's 11.57. Again, don't ever forget, 11.57 is a very important provision okay. under the obligation.